and to facilitate the adoption of safe driving collision avoidance technology. And this is a panel of esteemed experts that will be talking about this topic. Uh, my name is Jerry Spears and I'm from Montana and I oversee the um, insurance programs for the counties of Montana. I also happen to be on the national board for insurance pools in this country and I also am on a TRB committee for technology transfer and my job is to facilitate this discussion. So let's do the intros before we go off to Jerry Luton. So you're up next. Sheldon, introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Sheldon Sandler from Bel Air Partners. Mike? Hi, Mike Scudato, uh, head of the mobility domain, which develops new automotive insurance and risk management solutions at Munich Re. Hi, uh, Michael Tchaikovsky, uh, Stratify, a New York-based analytics, uh, predictive analytics uh, software company. I'm Jerry Luton, and I'll be up next, I guess. Jerry, let's turn it over to you. Jerry is actually on the side of Jedi Knight, and he is just amazing at this topic. So here you go. This is pretty grim. Uh, August 19th, 2006 in Newark, New Jersey. Those are two New Jersey Transit buses that collided. Uh, headlines, these were in the Star Ledger. Driver killed 18 injured after two NJ Transit buses crash in Newark. Newark, and that's, that's not correct. It was a driver and a passenger killed and only 17 injured. Uh, Newark bus crash victims to sue for at least $115 million in catastrophic injuries. You know, they're probably going to get it. They probably will get that money. They deserve it, actually. But my, I, my former company, I, I was with New Jersey Transit for 20 years. They're going to have to pay it. Rather, they're not they're going to have to pay it. The taxpayers of New Jersey are going to wind up paying for it. So uh, what I've been doing is working with Jerry Spears. And I, and I, I want to say something about insurance pools. Um, you know, I, when, we, when I started uh, looking at, at automated vehicles with Alan Kornhauser, I mean, we first started 40 some odd years ago, but uh, more, and more recently, uh, Alan said, uh, Jerry, insurance is going to, this is going to pay, pay for itself. All this technology is going to pay for itself in terms of ins insurance claims. And then I heard other, from other people, oh, the insurance companies, they're so conservative, they're not going to let this happen. Well, Alan was right. And the people who were talking about the insurance companies were dead wrong. And I wound up learning uh, or meeting Jerry Spears a few years ago Jerry called up and said, I'm from the Washington State Transit Insurance Pool. Insurance pool, what's that? I had no idea what an insurance pool was. And it turns out that they in, in insured, what, 2,500 vehicles uh, uh, out in the state of Washington. New Jersey Transit was self-insured, so we didn't, we didn't we're, we're part of a pool. Uh, and they got me involved in looking at what was going on in the industry. And as a result of that, I start. I, I uh, talked to the public transit, American Public Transit Association, and they, they uh, tuned me in to a federal database. And it turns out that what's the potential, the, the automation potential in terms of safety for the transit industry? Well, this is just 2016 data. Buses were involved in 4,578 4, collisions. They injured almost 17,000 people, killed 105. The casualty and liability expenses, and this is not for all transit, this is just for buses. The rail side is actually less than this. $701 million of casualty and liability expenses. This is nationwide for all of the, all the transit agencies that report to the Federal Transit Administration. That's a huge number for an industry which doesn't make any money. So uh, th th those are kind of the stakes here. Um, uh, we were f fortunate, actually Jerry Spears uh, initiated this and, and I worked with him. We, we got a grant, the Washington State Transit Insurance Pool, Insurance Pool got a grant and Mike Scredato from, from Unifree, they kicked in as well. The insurance people are really the pioneers in this and backing this, this innovation. We were able to equip 35 buses uh, uh, from, from Jerry's Insurance Pool and three more from, from Seattle. Uh, we equipped them with, with collision avoidance systems. They gave us access to their claims, and we looked through all of the past insurance claims. Uh, 
we were able to evaluate the potential for collision avoidance systems to reduce the frequency and severity of collisions and to reduce the casualty and liability expenses. So uh, it, we did not in that one include autonomous emergency braking. This was just collision avoidance warnings. Uh, these are the eight transit agencies that were involved. Um, Roscoe Mobile, is, there, is, is Nick Applin here? Nick, is anybody here from Roscoe? Mobile? I think Nick's coming tonight. Nick's coming tonight. Anyway, uh, the technology that was tested was, was the Roscoe Mobileye Shield Plus system. Uh, it, it contains four cameras, and uh, the cameras don't record, but they, but they do detect pedestrians and vehicles and allow you to avoid them. Uh, it provides alerts and warnings for events that could lead to a collision, changing lanes, it, it lets you know if you're exceeding the posted speed limit, closing with vehicles in front, closing with pedestrians or bicycle in front of or beside. A lot of pedestrians and bicyclists get injured and killed when they're behind the driver because the bus, oops, this thing, no, it's still on, okay. Uh, so that's, so that's a, a, an area that, th that the system covers. Uh, it gives alerts and warnings. It has visual indicators. Uh, this is a picture of, of one of the kits being installed uh, when I was out at, at, uh, at CTRAN in Vancouver, Washington. Uh, this is what it looks like from inside the bus when you, um, whoops, I turned it off. Okay. Uh, let's see if that's the, okay, yeah. This is the, the center of the, win of the windshield. There, there are actually three indicators. There's one over here on the left. One in the middle, one on the right, so it directs the driver's attention to where the collision. Uh, this is uh, Gus Frangel from uh, from R Roscoe, and we got to find some way better to test this than. than he's than very put. brave. Yeah, uh, but uh, but he's he's still alive as far <laughs> as I know. So anyway, uh, we collected data for a three month period. We got three hundred fifty thousand operating miles, almost twenty four thousand hours of experience. We had driver surveys. We had 250 uh, driver survey responses. They gave us a lot of comments. Uh, Two-thirds of the drivers did not like the system. They, only a third of them said, well, it's okay. Uh, we got 16,600 hours of video. We logged 10,000 events. Uh, we got 19 terabytes of video storage. All went to the University of Washington for analysis. No pedestrian or forward collisions. Uh, with these buses. Now, uh, the, why did we collect all that video? Well, the part of, the uh, of this test was to evaluate false positives and false negatives. We found that about 3% of the warnings were, were false positives and about 3 tenths of a percent were false negatives. So it was pretty good, not, not, not outstandingly good, but very good. Uh, and um, we also had some communications failures. We equipped 38 buses. We didn't really get signals from all 38 buses throughout the, throughout the thing. So we learned some things too. Uh, anyway, one of the things that we had, one of the bus companies uh, did not want to uh, s turn this thing on to alert the drivers. I mentioned that two thirds of the drivers did not like the system. They were annoyed by the warnings. And when this thing was initially set up, the system wasn't really uh, meant for an application in which a vehicle aims itself at a big group of pedestrians, which is exactly what a bus does when it's coming to a bus stop. So uh, the system had to be retuned, but a lot of the drivers were not happy with that. Anyway, uh, it turned out that, that the, the Spokane Transit uh, Agency, um, we, what we were able to do was to, was to uh, we had telematics data, that told us any time the system was triggered, whether it was a pedestrian warning, whether it was a vehicle warning, uh, and we were able to, uh, to uh, check the mileage that happened. So we were able to find um, what was the distance in terms of miles, or in terms of, of system warnings per thousand miles for the control group and system warnings for those drivers who were getting the warnings. So in action, it, it, it turned out, and this wasn't intended, by the way. We didn't intend to have a control group. We weren't that smart. Um, but, but it turned out that we found that, um, that for the buses where the drivers weren't getting warnings, they were getting about 300, over 300 warnings per thousand miles. The active fleet was getting only 93. And the pedestrian co collision warnings. And the, what, what happened was that the the system warnings that were being broadcast to the drivers made them more aware of these situations, so they began to drive in a manner to minimize the warnings, 
which was a more cautious uh, uh, set of uh, performances. So they were able, we were able to, they were able to reduce their warnings. We didn't run enough miles to really see whether we could, we didn't get any collisions, but we might not have had any collisions with only 350,000 miles anyway, because you really needed to, uh, the average uh, distance between collisions is about 700,000 miles. So, uh, so anyway, this was a proxy, really, that, that we were able to have an evaluation measure. Was these are these warnings really ne represent near misses? So the group that was getting getting the signals from the collision avoidance was having far few fewer near misses, almost 72 percent for vehicle uh, warnings and 43 percent for pedestrian warnings. Uh, we looked through. 50, uh, Jerry gave us access to all of their 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 claims data. And that was a, a real treasure trove. We went through $53 million worth of claims, myself and a couple of other guys. Uh, what we found was that 35% um, that of those claims were from other causes, slip and falls, uh, people who got in fights on the bus, uh, people who got trapped under, uh, you know, fell off of lifts and things like that, had nothing to do with collisions. We found that 35% uh, uh, of the claims uh, were, would, would be impacted by collision warnings for forward collision and 30%. So 65% of these claims were preventable if we had the right technology for it. And we also did an analysis, I'm not going to go through the numbers here, but the point is we discovered that when we looked at, at, at you know, if we have this on the bus for 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, when does it begin to pay for itself? And, and for the life of a bus, which is here around 14 years, we found that we were getting a savings of anywhere between almost $1,000 and $2, $2,000 per bus per year in terms of claim reductions. So it was a significant benefit. And not only that, it's reducing, it's reducing lives. The next step, this is a curve that represents uh, velocity of the bus versus time. And there are different phases that you go through. Uh, the first is the reaction time when a driver is aware that there's a, there's a problem ahead. Then there's something called brake latency when the, when the driver takes their foot off the, the accelerator, puts it on the brake, the brakes have to charge their air brakes. Then uh, jerk, which is the change in rate of deceleration and then deceleration. So the next step in all this is to look at autom auto autonomous braking, which actually is gonna take this particular portion of it where the bus is moving the fastest and cut that time down so the, short, the stopping distance is shorter. Uh, Pierce Transit, which is one of Jerry's uh, former members, they received, uh, well, we, we, we got a 1.66 million federal grant. We're gonna equip 30 buses, uh, 30 more buses with the, with the collision avoidance system. Uh, we're gonna record the uh, data for them and we're gonna possibly buy another 70 buses and then we're gonna equip up to 30 buses and test automated braking. Uh, the autonomous, autonomous emergency braking uh, package is by a company called DCS. It's, it is, they claim that it's gonna react 50 times faster than a human being and re reduce panic stops by 50%, and that is gonna include a LIDAR detection. Uh, we got a lot of partners involved in this. There are three federal agencies, uh, the Federal Transit Administration, which oversees all transit buses. They're, they're funding a, a good portion of it. Uh, we also have people from NHTSA and people from the Volpe Center uh, who are, who are kind of overseeing the project. Munich Re is involved, as is uh, WISTIP. There are three vendors and uh, a bunch of research people, including uh, University of Washington and Virginia Tech. Uh, so uh, I'm going to skip over the workflows because my time is short. Uh, we're going to be looking at system effectiveness, safety, and return on investment. So we have all these performance measures. And with that, I'm going to turn it over back to Jerry. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, I'll, I'll just quickly speak on Ann Gergen. She's not here today, and she's from AGRIP. And just uh, a little bit about AGRIP and who we are. AGRIP is the National Pooling Association. In the United States, you probably didn't know this, but in the United States, there's 90,000 public entities, local government type groups, and 65,000 of those type entities belong to a self-insurance pool. They don't get commercial insurance. And uh, to follow up uh, what Jerry said about technology, I'm running a pilot in, Mo in Montana. I have a mobilized single camera unit on uh, 30 sheriff's vehicles. 
and they were pretty excited about it because there's a lot of deer and cow in, in, in Montana and they hit cars. And so the chip doesn't detect it, but their next version is supposed to have it. But I'm running the pilot and I actually had a deputy say that it helped him avoid a rear ender accident because he was looking down the, you know, those terminals that you have in police vehicles when you're trying to read license plates and it saved, it already paid for itself and the fact that he avoided a rear ender accident and we're gonna run the pilot for the next year or so and then when the, uh, when the chip comes out or some some sort of product comes out with animal detection, they'll be lining out the doors in Montana because it's like it's a rite of passage that you hit an animal or a deer because they jump in front of you. So on that, I'll turn it over to Mr. Scridato.